Okay, welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury three three three. Bit of a technical mishap happened during the tournament. I forgot to turn on the audio for this first game, so this is post commentary, which means yes, I have seen the game before, but it also means unfortunately that Floris is not here with me in this re-record, so it is just my commentary. Anyway, so we have Capricious and Kshatriya and Imor and Felthus have played their games out, and that's Capricious versus Felthus. Get that. Done should be a pretty good game, or a pretty good series rather. That is, these two players are obviously very, I mean, they are very good players and they've fought quite well so far. Nimor against Kshatriya playing their match as well, which that the results will come obviously later. And I guess I might as well just get to the game directly now. Right, so let's start up. We have Living Lands, which is a map which should be very familiar. Capricious Felth going for the Kaluki Bot Factory. Felthas has not yet chosen their factory. Ah, going for Shield Bot. All right, so Kaluki versus Shield Bot, which is an old bot matchup. Hasn't really been seen too often. Not recently, at least. I mean, it came up a lot before, but not so much. Anyway, Felthas. I mean, Capricious both starting out. Capricious going for a couple Glaives. Felthas going for a very quick Worker. Not even really worrying about Bandits. Wants to get the Worker fast. And Capricious wants to get a little bit of scouting in. And we saw Felthos' construction. They do have solar plants on the north side of their base. So they are expecting something in the north side, trying to wall it off. While Capricious, focusing on building solar plants inside their base to avoid any damage within their base of units just running around from metal extractor to metal extractor inside the base. And Felthos with the first bandit out, just to scout around. Second, actually, first bandit's already up front. Dirtbag, sorry. First dirtbag's up front. First Bandit is in the main base. First Dirtbag does see that Capricious is going for Kaluki Bot Factory, so Felthos will be just setting up for that. They know that raids are coming, they know Glaives are coming, they know Capricious is being very aggressive. And Felthos already has the solar plant set up, so their north side is pretty well walled off. The eastern side of their main base, not so much. But, looks like Capricious is coming from the north anyway, so it works out. Which is one of the things I find interesting about this map, is despite the fact that it is symmetric from southwest to northeast, there is kind of this bias from the south player to stay along the south side and the north player to stay along the north side. I find it very interesting. It just seems to happen. Like You will see the north player occasionally go to the east center expansion and similarly the south player to the southwest expansion, or sorry, the west center expansion, but that's not super common. It's usually south center and north center respectively. Capricious already taking the north center while also going for a bit of an attack here Trying to just keep Felthos from getting out too much. Just keeping Felthos contained. Not really trying to do a whole lot of damage. Mostly just trying to make sure that Felthos can't really go anywhere. Can't go to that south expansion I was talking about. And really slowing down the bandits. While at the same time the commander is approaching the center. Felthos as well with their commander very rapidly getting to the center. Capricious has a much more solid economy right now. I mean, the, the extra two metal extractors, it's... Actually, it's not just two. They have one in the center as well. So that's actually producing an extra, of, as you can see, 8 metal right here. And Capricious wants to make sure Felthos doesn't go over to the south center, but Felthos, on the other hand, going straight for the center where Capricious has set up a couple defenders, and Dirtbag going along the side as well just to see what Capricious has. But for the most part, Felthos is very focused on taking that center. That is their entire mission right now. They want that center, and they want it now. That's all they care about. Very single-minded in that. And Capricious with that lightning gun just not letting that happen. Felthos. Might go for another shot at this, but like one shot of the bandits is no good. Feltas's commander getting an upgrade probably to beam laser, but it's not going to be enough. And Feltas realizing this throws in the towel right away. Very rapid game, very rapid loss. Feltas gambled at everything on the center, which was actually not that risky. First game, you might as well go for kind of cheesy strategies, go over the center. Capricious already had that in mind and had the harassment out earlier allowing them to do a lot more damage right in the center. Take that center, and Felthos didn't really go for more solid economy behind it, whereas Capricious had. And Felthos, they sent some dirtbag around to check it out, and they already knew. They knew Capricious was basically 10 metal per second ahead of them by now. And yeah, we already see here the income for Capricious just spiked in the middle of the game. For two minute game, that's meaning a lot, so Felthos had figured that out, or at least realized, I've lost a massive amount of my army for nothing. Although, to be fair, their armies were relatively even up until that one battle, but yeah, Felthas just had no economy behind that. Anyway, 
That's it for the post commentary. I'll be going back to the actual commentary that happened during the stream in just a few seconds. So, yeah, sorry about this, but it happens from time to time. Ah, I'm sorry! This stupid thing. Well, this matches. I'll just skip it over. I'm sorry! Ugh, stupid thing. I had to do the intro and then it screwed up the audio because I have to mute the microphone so that it doesn't screw everything else up. Damn it. Oh, sorry about that. Thankfully, that wasn't a very long map, but it's like, ugh, I'm getting tired. Oh, wait, that was game two is Living Lands. Wasn't it? No, it was game one. Game one was Living Lands. Game two is whatever. Whatever Capricious wants. Oh no, Failthos. Whatever Failthos wants. Ugh. My head. But yeah, whatever Felthos wants. I don't know what map it'll be. Uh, sorry about that. No, it, 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 you know, it was a bad call by Felthos. I'm watching his stream now, and he just gambled with his commander. He didn't anticipate a upgraded commander there. At this point, I'm a bit surprised. I guess I haven't seen a lot of Capricious' games, because Capricious has been upgrading that commander every single game. Indeed. So, I don't... I don't know. They haven't been seeing them, obviously. Which makes sense. It is Swiss. They're... Or, it was Swiss. Anyway... They failed us can pick. <laughs> Comet Catcher, Comet Catcher. <laughs> Hide and Seek. Hide and That's Seek, oh, it's my map. Yeah, and it's one of Feltos's home maps. Yeah. Like, back when Feltos and Flipstip were constantly sparring each other, this is the map they tended to play on the most. So, they're very used to this map. Yeah, well, it's not a 0k map. But <laughs> it seems to work. People seem to like it. It's weird. It actually doesn't work super great. It's okay. No, it's just... I agree. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. really work. <laughs> it's just too big. It's like it was clearly built for something else. It's just the density of it doesn't quite work. It almost works. But there's something about the combination of density and terrain and size that just causes it to just not quite work. If it was 12 by 12, it might work better. It's 16 by 14 16, by 14. right? 14 by 14. 14, 14 uh... But yeah, if it was 12 by yeah. 12 or 10 by 10, it would probably work better. But 14 by 14, the way it's built up, just makes it massive. It just makes it go all over the place. And it's cool to watch. It's just very tiring to play. Yeah, I remember that. But then, like I said, Felthos, Felthos knows this map. Like, this is one of their maps. So, Felthos already they, going they, for Clokybot. They're, uh... They know each other, or they play together a lot? Felthos and Capricious? Uh-huh. I don't know, actually. I don't really recall seeing a huge amount of games. Capricious and, and Kshatriya, I've cast some games of them. I don't... I'll check. I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't... I don't know offhand. Let's see. Hmm, <laughs> looks like... They haven't played in two months. Oh, okay. Anyway, it's jumpers versus glaives. I mean, cloakbots. Spiders versus cloakbots. Huh? Oh, wait. Darn it. Yeah. And spiders are pretty strong in this map. But kind of tricky to play. Felthos, on the other hand, going for the, spot, for going for the cloakbot factory, which... That's a strong choice overall. And Felthos, like I said, does know this map fairly well. Also started near the 2.4 max, which is a very good idea. Whereas Capricious, starting in the block of three, not sure if they realize that there is the two plus two one four max just north or just south of the opening of the obvious block of three. But yeah, that's one thing that they do have. Although right now Capricious is actually a bit ahead economically. Oh, Icons. Hide and seek is CCR with terrain. That's actually <laughs> a really good way of putting it, and Probably one of the big reasons I think it's a pretty neat map. 
Because that's the one thing I don't like about CCR, is that it doesn't really have terrain. It's just flat. Well, CCR has so many mexes and they're all 2.2 2, uh, something. And these yeah. are only 1.5 or whatever they, they made it when 1. they moved it. And there are a couple of bigger ones, but the default ones are 1. 1.5. 1.3. 1. Yeah. But yeah, that's the that thing. It doesn't really translate it. It was from the the metal map to the uh, transformation to the zero game map format with the fixed metal values. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that. <clears throat> yeah, it sort of worked out, I guess. Yeah, I think by default it tries to read the original metal map. That's right. It tries to read the original metal map, and then based on the size of the patch and the and the intensity of the patch, it works out what metal you'd likely get, and then mm. just makes that a point. Generally works fairly yeah. well, and in this map it actually works remarkably well. Like the metal extractors, there's only like I mean it's three different numbers, but there's only three, and there's not weird clusters where there's like two metal extractors that don't make sense. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember those. Yeah, Geyser Plains is a really a good example of when it screws up. Like that's that showcases yeah. the limits of Zero K's metal spot algorithm. Because that map also, has a lot of I remember those old. You remember Brazilian Battlefield? No, I never played that map. Okay, that was it had a completely green metal map, but with oh. different densities, so you could really. You had to figure out how to to uh, capture enough green area with your huge area metal uh, extractors. Right. They were. A, metal extractor would have an extraction radius f the size of a cluster of three and then uh, it was a puzzle <laughs> mm, okay it was really weird, weird. yeah I imagine that zero K would probably treat that as a speed metal map most likely it's one of those one very early uh, spring engine uh, maps oh I see so it's kind of trying to showcase what the spring engine can do I think so. It was before the the way you treat metal was standardized. I think. Hmm. Anyway, back to the game. Uh, yeah, so good rating on Feldhaus' part. expanding to three sites, exactly as you shoot on this map. You have a lot of routes to take. The lower left away from your opponent is usually... Into the corner is usually the most profitable one. Mm -hmm. You find a, a cluster of three of two and a half. Yeah, whereas with... I mean, also good harassment on Feldhaus's part to deal with Capricious going in that same direction, getting rid of the plus 2.7 and plus 2.4, so Capricious is down about 6 metal per second. And they haven't rebuilt it yet either. They're building up this northeast Have side, they but that's or what? about it. No, nothing is moving. Or was moving. <laughs> no, I think Capricious was just not paying attention or focusing on other parts of the map. Like setting up their construction over the northeast. Okay, the Lotus is up at least. That will stop... Okay, that'll stop all the glaives. Oh, mm. no, no, it won't. It would stop those first two. The no, next it will stop two? them all. Ah, I didn't go. I thought it was going to go around the back of the metal extractor. Had the glaive done that, it probably would have survived. But yeah, Felthos continuing to pressure, and now with double the economy. That's a huge difference. And Capricious, they're sort of catching up. Felthos knows how to play this. Oh, like I said, yeah, Felthos has practiced this map so often. I don't even know how many games they've played on this map, but it's plenty. And you do not... With spiders, you cannot do this um, band of rogue raiders to uh, just keep stomping all the expansions. Yeah. Like you, do, you can have a... Like you can do with a ball of thugs and uh, bandits and a, and a rogue or something. And you can just start moving around. You just clean up metal extractors and solar collectors that are everywhere. Spiders can't really do that because they always lose stuff when they're attacking turrets. Yeah, the Hermits aren't a bad idea for trying to do that, though. Like, if there is any the, unit that will do that, it would be the Hermit. Yeah. They, they suffer attrition, that's the correct, correct term. Yeah, like, that's a good I way guess. of putting it. I'm a bit surprised Same. that Capricious hasn't built any Venoms. I'm not surprised they're building Recluses. That range will help out a lot against defenses. I'm just surprised they aren't building any additional Venoms. I guess they have these three. But Venom Hermit can be really useful for reducing attrition. Like, just stun out the turret, you don't have to worry about it killing you. 
Although at this point, Felthos is so heavily defended, I don't know how it would possibly work. Not to mention the Hermits are getting torn apart by Glaives. There's only so much they can do. And Scythe. Like, more Reckless's are coming up. There's that one right here. There's no Redbacks. The Venoms are over to the north side of the map coming down, which will help a bit. But yeah, this map is interesting for Spiders because of the terrain, but it's really hard because there's only so much you can take advantage of by getting over terrain. I think with Recluses, you can... You have a long-range, invulnerable, uh, mo mobile turret. That's true. And the range is so decently think... long, but it's not super long when you're even on the hill in the center. Because, yeah, okay, the and entire center very, is there. There are not a lot of mexes you can challenge or kill with uh, a recluse on a hill. That's true. No, that's exactly You can the only point. deny the, the center one. The center one, center one in, along the passage. Uh, over the edges. Actually, come to think of it, if you go over to the north, that north plateau or south plateau, you can deny quite a few of them. Yeah, maybe. That'd be a lot of room to just blow up expansions. Like if that, if that reckless were to go down to the southern plateau, it would be able to take out about four-ish metal worth of expansion, as well as a giant defensive line. Hmm. And but Feldos can sit back for now. I don't know. Feldos is going for the harassment. Or, or, but four well, laser turrets metal is donation. too much. <laughs> Thoughts just kind of wants to go easy on Capricious. Just give them a little bit of metal. You know, just, just make sure it's not too dominating. Like here, just take, take some metal. I, I'm nice. I'm nice. Here, have my metal. Just Yeah, Thoughts even has this, this okay. little glaive at, in the back of the base. You can just see whenever he's going to take those maxes. And he hasn't. And he sees it. He knows it. Yeah. He knows he's ahead economically. No kidding, Feldhaus hasn't even taken the back side. I mean, they're starting to take the back side of the road side in the western center, but even then, it's not much. Ah, and that Recluse, it's gonna get killed. Oh, the Venom. Okay. That Venom is the only thing saving the Recluse right now. The and now we can do the skirmisher game. Yes, the Recluses, and now this is a good area to fight in uh, for the spiders. Because those. The shield yeah. bots. Well, I mean, those. those uh, uh, Cloaker bots cannot. Cannot get up, uh, cannot get close to the spiders. They will just run up that hill, and they, as soon as you move forward, yeah. So they'll just have to take the, the recluse shots until he can uh, bring out uh, snipers or mortys or rapiers, as the case may be. Yeah. Well, but or you can just miss micro and lose one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, look, if the phantom would have been a couple meters forward, <laughs> then he could have saved his uh, recluse. Oh well. Yeah, that that's the thing. Control is your friend. Like seriously, when you're moving stuff, hold control while you move it, and then all the units will move at the same speed. It's super useful for making sure that you don't have units that are in a position fall out of that position when you need some unit in front in front of another unit in a group. Although I mean, it was a nice attack, he might have won this fight, but in the long run it doesn't gain him anything. Yeah. He cannot reclaim the metal, he doesn't gain any metal extractors himself. He didn't deny any metal extractors of his opponent. And Capricious' so commander a, is about uh, to go down too. I like Capricious' gauss ball though. Blocking off sides from coming into that choke point. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. Capricious' commander is down, but still, there is oh that, that gauss nano frame wall which has been destroyed. Ah! And now the rapier is just cleaning up. Is there a tarantula on yeah. the way? There is a tarantula on the way. Uh, one is not enough. No. You can just start, go, and clean expansions. Yeah, the northeast side is totally done. There's nothing in place. That 214217 aren't still not done in the north in the center. The north of Capricious's base. No. They have not been rebuilt. He completely neglected to build more constructors during the game. Okay, Capricious has got to be just tired. Like They've just got to be exhausted. That's the only explanation. Because yeah, Capricious has been... I'm pretty sure they've been on point with rebuilding. I don't recall them missing rebuilds. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure they're just... On the other hand, it done. takes a lot of attention to keep track of every max on this map. That's, it does. That's the hard part. Yeah, that's true. This map. I'm just saying they're probably tired because they aren't keeping track of it. Yeah. I mean, it's not in and of itself costing them the game. It's more the fact that they don't have a lot of mexes to begin with that's costing them the game. Like, this is so much Failthos' map that I'm not surprised. Like, Failthos basically picked this map for a free win. Just to make it 1-1 so that it'd be a contest. Uh-huh. Like, 
Gibbers just had a chance, but it was a pretty small chance just how much for how much Felthos knows this map. And knows how to deal with this map. And I don't know how much Capricious knows this map. I actually really don't. I'm kinda curious. But at any rate, yeah, the Rapier is just doing all this work. Just so much work. I don't I guess. That's probably gonna be it. Yeah, that, that, he has a scorpion now, so... The switch to uh, Striders, it, it was good. I was thinking of how you can stop it. As a spider player, I guess you can't. I think even uh, Dante would have been even uh, stronger. Okay, Capricious has played Hide and Seek twice. Ah. Like, in the last four years. Once four <laughs> years ago, and another time two years ago. That might explain a few things. Yeah, that, that would explain quite a lot, actually. This, the map is so different from uh, Red Comet or whatever. You have to refigure out everything. And, yeah, Map knowledge, it's a thing. Totally is. So yeah, at this point, Felthas, nice little scorpion there. And Capricious, I don't know, I mean, they have no, 12 per second, they're holding the scorpion, on. It's just recluses. Yeah, they're not doing bad with recluses, uh, but still. His, his army on uh, defenders. Nice. Yeah, but although it's just a delay, he still won't come back from it. it but he has won the battle for now. Scorpion the battle. Siri parents, and then uh, I, I still think you're better off with either catapults or uh, Dante's. Just want to punch through spiders. Uh, they're like all made out of paper. I don't know, I think Felthos might just be on a, on a scorpion kick. I've been noticing a lot of scorpions built recently. They seem to be kind of in fashion. Mm. It's the coolness factor. Yeah. Hey, but why build one if you can have two? Yeah, that's the thing. That's the one thing that Felthos might have working against them, is that so much of their army value is now in scorpions. Even though they still have a fairly large army, it's like a, they have six thousand metal worth of scorpions, and the I see next glaives. thing uh. is, <laughs> yeah. I mean, most the rest of it is these glaives here, but that's not much. So yeah, they've got a lot of army value in scorpions, and if Capricious can deal with the scorpions, that's actually an avenue back into the game. I mean, I it's a hail mary pass. I think it's still a, a bit of a waste. You think that glaives? The glaives are Capricious staying in the game. No, that raid of glaives was a bit of a meh move. Yeah. I think it was more information. At this stage in the game, Failthos doesn't care to lose a few glaives. 600 metal, whatever. Yeah, what, why not? They're throwing 6,000 metal around without a care in the world. And another and a crow on top of that. Like, Failthos. Oh, it's crow time again. Less. Jeez. It's the second time I see him make a crow. Yeah, but this time it's actually going to be crow. able to do something. Let's hope he can use it before his opponent uh, resigns. Uh, I guess that's the game, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Then he should just fake that he's losing. I don't know. I think the thing is, because the Scorpions are cloaked, Capricious has no idea where they are. <laughs> as yeah, far as Capricious like knows, they are cloak. losing. <laughs> like, Capricious can't see them. Capricious doesn't even have fleas around them out to spot them, which is actually kind of surprising, given that, you know, spiders and all. But no, there's no fleet that would use spot anything. Uh, uh. And Northeast torn apart by Glaze again. And there's the Scorpions. Is there the GG? Nope, the Recklesses are still fairly confident. Oh, so close to getting out of range. Although I actually didn't get too stunned, so that worked out all right. Scorpion at half health. Those Recklesses are actually doing a fairly good job. Okay, there's GG. Uh, and the Crow again. doesn't get played! Again. Oh. A crow did nothing! We're never gonna see it do anything, are we? Next time you should just start out with a crow. <laughs> well, we'll see, there is game three coming up. We might see a crow built, just... Four and a half thousand on ten metal, that's 456. So you play for seven and a half minutes? On ten metal, so that's your starting location? Yeah. If you convince your opponent to do nothing for four and a half minutes. Well, both players were relatively low metal up until about five minutes into the game, from the looks of the... Oh, no, five minutes. About 
three and a half minutes into the game. And then Felthos just took off. Sorry, then, yeah, Felthos took off. And Kipper just lagged behind. Okay, so it's 1 1. Yeah. Alright, so. Yeah, that's exactly right. It is 1 1. Well, that was at least a more interesting game with actual commentary. Hey. Better than the last one. Yeah, that was good. In Kaltai, so we got a Comet Catcher with slightly more terrain. Wait, no, no, that's difference. not Felthouse's choice. That's not Felthouse's choice. Oh. That's Capricious. Huh? Capricious gets to choose. Oh, so Capricious picks. Man, apparently oh, he wants Inculta. He's fine with it. All right, cool. Oh, They're okay. fine with it. Oh, no, it's Capricious said Inculta. Cap that was Capricious' choice. No, Veltos okay. is just boss of the room, I guess. Capricious, Capri but he's, uh, he is a uh, open map uh, vehicle Loki player, so wow. This is uh, your map. Like uh, Red Comet Plus Plus. Yeah. So that would you make... could either just play Red Comet on half speed, or you could play Inculta. <laughs> huh? I didn't get in the game. What the heck? All right. Anyway. Ay, this is gonna be interesting. So yeah, game three, Eagles. winners finals. We're almost through the winners finals, and then whoever loses, loses. this goes up against Kshatriya and at this point it's kind of anyone's game the winner yeah. of that then goes against the winner of this uh, and what happens if we get a for the finals get the same game as this do you continue from the previous score or do you start uh, over start from 0-0 zero, zero? start from 0-0 zero, zero. ok that's how it always works yeah I've seen many tournaments where you continue from the previous score if you had the same encounter before. Just oh, to speed okay. up the, the tournament. So if you've lost to someone 2-0 earlier in the tournament and you face again in a later round, you continue from 2-0 up to the best of X. Mm, no, in this case, they're all best of three. And then grand finals might have two rounds. Yeah, there might actually be two grand finals. If the person who came from loser's bracket wins, they have to win again. Like they have to... Two best of threes. Yeah. If they win, if they lose, if the person from the winners bracket wins, then the game's then the tournament's over. That doesn't make sense. But whatever. Well, no, because think about it. Because the person in the losers bracket, <laughs> they've lost a match. The person from the winners bracket has never lost, and everyone has to be eliminated twice. Oh, uh, because of this rule. Oh, yeah. I, because then the um, if you come from the winners bracket and you lose, then you actually get knocked down to the losers bracket, which you are the yes. only person in, and then you get to the finals. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, loses bracket, which the other person's already in, and then you're in finals, but then either one can win. So yeah, basically, winner's person's knocked down to loser's bracket. That's that's right. Ooh, we get oh, to that... see lots of darts. I hope to see a lot of darts this game. This game. Yeah, versus, that... This is this is a classic classic matchup. It is. I'm just thinking that dart. That dart could have got a shot off. Why didn't it shoot? Oh well. Still good scouting on both sides. Everyone seems to know what everyone else is up to, so that'll be good for their own play. So, <laughs> look how Capricious hasn't made a single turret yet. Isn't it beautiful? Wow, you're right. Felthos has, well, the one, the defender. Although that defender didn't actually do anything. That dart lived. Yeah, exactly. Can't the same for, uh, Capricious. He, he he kept everything alive. Oh no 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 no! That dart's dead. That dart's going to run uh -huh. straight into the Scorchers and die. But Whereas... now the thing is, if your opponent, in this case, if uh, Felos was m had, had made some Scorchers or a group of five darts and was moving uh, through the corner of the map, Capricious would not have seen it and would lose his entire backside of his base. Those three maxes and a Constructor. He, 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 there was no way he could have known that. Like it was a gamble of on a side. side. He's playing so risky. This is like gambling, one hundred percent. He is so lucky that failed us. Has no units on his side of the map. Yeah, he has no radar cover. 
No, oh. it does. Uh, no, 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 no. Commercial has radar cover. They have they have radar coverage no, on no, those nexus. If you see a unit here, if there are five darts here, then it's already too late. You cannot intercept oh. it anymore. Because they move like this. Yeah, that makes sense. That is a very good point. So yeah, you're right. Capricious is just betting on Feltas going entirely for Scorchers and then going straight forward attack. Yeah, or just and they're right. Expense, you can, or you can just gamble on it and expand quicker than your opponent can tear it down. That's also an approach. Yeah, so yeah I lose this side, but I still have the north side, which is also expanding. So in the end, I end up in a in a favorable situation. But uh, hey, Capricious now trying to any the, the point I try to make is that. You need more darts. Just yeah, both offensively and defensively. Oh, and Capricious was trying to pull Feltas back, and apparently, it backfired. Feltas now pulling Capricious's Scorchers back. Yeah, and There's one, one of Feltas is dead. That Lotus. Now he, he should really. Oh. He should have made a, a radar turret. Uh, is he going through with it? Yes, he is. Oh yeah, that that Lotus is dead. He didn't even lose the Scorcher. Nope. And he and sends all his scorches back ah, to intercept two. Those, yeah, now he he, he uh, moves them back forward. But that was also a bit of a lose of timing. Yeah, Loss this is where really the gamble falls apart. Didn't quite get the intercept. Oh, but Felthos is getting stuck. One of the dead scorchers completely screwed over Felthos. But yeah, he he kept his solars. He lost two a constructor and two maxes. Especially that constructed loss is an uh, issue. Yeah, that is going to be a major blow. I mean, thankfully not a lot of mechs has died, so rebuilding is not going to be as big of a problem. No, but, but still. he has no constructor in that area, so that's a big loss. He cannot rebuild mm -hmm. it for at least a minute. Yeah, exactly. Although... He needs to figure out if he... Ah, the counter is going to be failing. Don't, don't attack. Feltas is way too well defended. Yeah, you should... If you move forward, your opponent retreats and regroups closer to his own factory and his own turrets, and then you should just follow up to the turrets and then keep hanging out there and yeah. wait until they come out, and then you retreat to your side again. Well, it's a good idea to force your opponent to retreat that way. It's just that... Yeah, <sighs> losing units on the way like this to a leveler is not a good idea. Jeez, it was so good, well played, but not if you lose your attention. Ah, uh, yeah, Capricious is focusing on that Scorcher back in their base. And fails us I getting the economic so. advantage. Playing it slow and steady, but it's working out. Capricious is gambling, is not paying off. They still haven't rebuilt the south side. Now. Mason's just completed. Presumably to rebuild the south, but I don't know. He swapped two gunships really quick. But he's going straight for the main base. I guess he wants to go uh, kill nano turrets. Looks like it. I mean, what else are they going to destroy? I mean, on the other hand, though, getting rid of caretakers is a great idea. Yeah, of course, it always is. Or constructors. Well, that too. Oh, spotted in advance. Felthos with that production. Yeah. That sucks. That's No caretaker is going to die. At least one rapier no. down. He should move in, away from the factory in a straight, in a straight line. Why are you no finding the crashers? No, the rapiers are no all committing suicide. What the heck? No. That was a major blunder. You could have done so much with the rapiers. Like mop up the left side or the low, the the, the bottom side. Oh, there are tanks coming up. Capricious switching again to tanks, probably to get reapers or panthers. However, the brawler can really make a difference now. You can even kill that uh, commander. Oh yeah, uh, that could help quite a lot actually. That's certainly the attempt. Oh, and Diamond for pointing out that Feltas also had full metal storage when that attack happened, so the crashes had an even easier time being built. Like 40 build power all poured into crashers. No death, though. That brawler should be good defensively, though. Like getting rid of the scorchers that are coming in. But then again, there's three groups no. of scorchers running around. That's not going to be Takes good enough. Time. And the crash is coming yeah. in here. Slowing it down. Oh, man. Mason, kill the crashers. I think Failthos has taken this. Yeah, he is. He really is. I don't, what I don't can know. You, what can you do with a, with a tank factory? Well, there's uh, a few options, but it looks like the option is Panther. Get rid of the Scorchers directly. 
Maybe build a bunch of dining chairs? I don't see them. I see panthers. I see loads of... I mean, banishers wouldn't be a bad idea, but that's not what's going on. It's all panthers. That's a lot of panthers. I mean, sorry, I'm looking at scores right now, but that's... That is a fair amount of panthers that are being built. And... Still, it's just hard. The numbers really aren't in their favor. Even with the tick explosion, it's just not enough. No, it's not. I... I don't know. This is... If Capricious has any way to pull it out... I don't see that working. Hmm. Yeah, Felis can just spam from here on. He has one. Oh, wait, does he want to finish it? Yeah, that's the question. Because Capricious doesn't really have enough money to build Stardusts or anything else that would really get rid of a bunch of Scorchers. And also, this map, it's really hard to do that. There's not a whole lot of choke pointing. No. And more Lotuses. Like, a Stardust would actually, in a good spot, would at least slow Felthos down a bit and buy Capricious some time. But Capricious would have to play perfectly for the next five minutes to be able to pull that off. And clearly they're tired. So I think this is just going to be game. I'll move on to Losers Finals afterwards. For Capricious versus... Well, presumably Capricious versus Kshatriya. Alright, so... Capricious managing to get some Reclaim. That's the one thing Capricious might actually have going for them. Like, Reclaim is still a thing. Although Felthas is so much yeah. further ahead, I don't know. It's 15 tough. 15 metal a second diff difference, that's... Yeah, nah, that's it doesn't happen. And Banshee's coming in from Felthas just to try to finish it up. GG. Is it? I don't see the GG. No, it, it... I mean, it is. I agree. It's just that I don't see the actual... Capricious no, is still no, no, holding no. on. It's GG <laughs> apart from the GG. Yeah. Apart from the actual letters being typed and the resign command being issued. But no, it looks like Capricious is still in this. They do not want to lose. I mean, I, I can see why they wouldn't, because this is... This is game three. If Capricious does find a miracle way to pull this back, some miracle play that gets them into this game and gets them actually winning, I don't know what it would be. But if they find some weakness in Feltos' strategy that allows them to completely overlook the massive economic difference, which Capricious does not know about, by the way. They don't actually know how much further ahead Feltos is. But if Capri Capricious got... That style of play just isn't... It's not resilient, it's fragile, and your area is... Your terrain is fragile. That's true. I mean, I agree. I'm just saying that Capricious is probably staying in because they figure there might be a chance, there might be something they can do, some miracle play that'll get them on the winner's side of the Grand Finals, rather than having to fight for the loser's side. Because if Felthos wins, then Capricious has to fight Felthos in two best-of-three series in order mm. to win the tournament. Whereas if Capricious wins, then they only have to fight Felthos or Kshatriya in one best-of-three series in order to win. I don't know what they're thinking that. I mean, they just want to win. I guess so. But at this point, Capricious is totally surrounded. And Panthers don't have splash damage, so yeah, good luck with that. It, and at this point... They'll wear the dime eventually, but... <laughs> yeah. Just kill the base in the meantime. Not much left. Oh, nice Panther death, actually. That worked out. <laughs> okay, small victory. Small victory look, in defeat. There, there's another army in your base. Okay, there's the... Yeah, now Capricious figured it out. What was the me metal income was actually in Capricious' advantage for, you know, four minutes. Not bad. But yeah, that you're right. It was really a matter of risk versus safety. And Capricious didn't manage to get a lot of damage done or expand a whole lot when Failthos was playing it super safe. So it's Xatria versus... 
Capricious. Capricious. Yeah. So that is going to be the next game. Because Shatra got the free game off of Nemore. So, we're going to be going to that. Not sure what map is going to be played on, though. Alright, so we have... What map? Please tell me the map. Or, well, just say the map, because I don't want to know exclusively. I want everyone to know. Just need to write it down. All right, the map is being rolled for, and it is... Hopefully not Flooded Valley, although I don't think Flooded Valley is on the list. No, it is not. Okay, there's actually, like, only, like, one map I'm not a huge fan of on this map, I think. No, actually... No, the list is fine. Actually, this map list, I think, is okay. Vitra. Vitra. All right, just give it a sec, and I should be able to get the stuff. Oh. Oh, wow. Capricious left. Huh. Well, they're still in the tournament yet. Is he? Yeah, they're still in Zeke Attorney. Oh, yeah, there he is. What the heck? Capricious, are you still playing? Please say you're still playing. Maybe he's getting tired. I think so. I mean... Well, it'll be what? Somewhere between 8 and 11? All right, so it looks like Capricious is probably still in. All right, phew! Well, do we want to give him a break? He just played three games in a row? Yeah, that's true, but... I think we're just going to get a rehost and then... Go? Small break? I don't know. Not sure what's going on. Maybe Capricious just wants to take a breather. Oh, okay, never mind. No, Capricious is ready. So we are about ready. 